Hi guys, Azazel here, and today we are doing the Waterfall quest, and not just doing it, but doing it at level 3 with 10 HP. And not only that, I will be attempting to do it with just cake as my best food. Now, the Waterfall quest is a fantastic quest to do early, uh, if you can do it at level 3 even better, because the quest rewards are a lot of attack and strength XP. If you are level 1 attack and strength, it will take you all the way to level 30. So if you can do this quest as early as possible, then it will be a huge head start in combat. Now, while you don't have to fight anything in this quest, you will be having to run past some moss giants which have a max hit of 14. And I will show you how to complete the quest without being hit by them, hopefully, but if you aren't confident in your ability or you're a newer player, I would strongly recommend getting 15 plus HP first so that nothing you will encounter in this quest can one-shot you. Um, my recommendation would actually be to do the Witch's House quest first, and I will put a link in the description below to my quest guide for that, just as soon as I make it. And that will take you straight from level 10 HP to level 24, which will be plenty for this quest and make it significantly easier. But I will show you how to do it at level 3 with 10 HP. Now, for this quest, you are going to need uh, a piece of rope, 6 air runes, 6 water runes, and 6 earth runes. And you will also be wanting some food. Uh, preferably the best food you can get your hands on. I will be using cake and I will show you how to get that. It's the easiest food to get on a really low level Iron Man um, straight off of Tutorial Island. But if you want to use something better, which might be a good idea, uh, trout or salmon are very easy to get at a low fishing level and um, heal significantly more and they will make things a lot easier but hopefully not necessary. Also, you will see I have uh, full iron armor here. I understand that iron man might not have that, but you may have your iron man armor in the bank that you claim from Paul or Adam outside Lumbridge Castle, and that has stats equal to full iron. And so I'm using, because this account isn't an iron man, I'm using full iron in place of that, but if you have it, I would recommend using it just to make the quest a little bit easier and be hit less often. For getting to the start location, which is Backstory and Falls, you... well, there's a few ways to get here. If you have a games necklace, that would be the easiest option, since you can then use the Barbarian Outpost teleport and walk south. But I understand that new players and low-level Ironmen might not have that. Uh, so if you have all the items you need, and the food, and you're already here, that's fantastic. And you can click the timestamp that's at the top of the description below to skip to the start of the quest. If you don't have anything, and you're just off Tutorial Island, and you're wondering where in the world you should start, don't worry, because I will do a full run-through right now. So. Here I am, back in time in Lumbridge, and I'm going to show you how on a brand new Iron Man you would get the items and food needed for the quest and get to the quest start location as quickly and easily as possible. The plan is going to go something like this. I'm going to uh, get level 5 thieving off of men around here in Lumbridge, and then uh, we are going to walk north up to Varrock uh, up here and stop in at the magic shop and buy the runes that we need and then we will walk across to Edgeville and take the wilderness lever all the way to Ardoin and there we will buy the rope that we need steal cake for food and then walk to the quest start so that's the plan Let's give it a go. I'm going to start with uh, Thieving the Men, and I am level 
one thieving. I got a few agility levels just to make the running easier, but that really won't make a difference. So we're just going to be thieving away. If you fail, you'll take one damage, and you'll fail quite a lot. The nice thing about thieving uh, in Lumbridge Castle Courtyard here is that if you die, you will just respawn right here. You can pick up your items and uh, carry on thieving. Obviously, if you're a hardcore Iron Man, don't die. So I am going to fast forward to level 5 thieving. So there is level 5 thieving. And uh, I can take the coins because I just died. I have 147, which uh, hopefully you'll have roughly the same amount if you did level 1 to 5 thieving. Uh, if you had a bit of thieving XP before, though, for this route that I'm going to be taking, you will need, I believe, exactly 100 GP, maybe 120 just to be safe. And so now we're going to begin the walk to Varrock. Apologies, I forgot to mention, but at this point you may also wish to claim your free Iron Man armor from Paul or Adam. Um, if you finished thieving on, like, very low health, three or less, you may want to consider just thieving a little bit more until you die again, uh, just so that you start with full health and full run energy as well. Oh, wow. Oh my god. What is this? A ninja impling, a dragon impling, and an eclectic. Oh man. Should I go and get my Iron Man? I will be right back. Well, I'm back, and that was a very unexpected intermission. Uh, I did get all of those implings, and I will probably put that clip in at the end so you can see what I got. And you'll get a nice sneak peek at my main Iron Man account as well. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, on with the quest. That was bizarre. That was a lot of implings. When I actually arrived with my main, there were, there were some, uh, there was an essence impling as well. Four implings in the same place. So, uh, I will be entering Rock via the south entrance. Um, but bear in mind there are some dark wizards just before you get to the gate, so make sure you have some spare run energy when you get to them, because they will really ruin your day if you are low level. Fortunately the level 7 attacked me and not the level 20, because the level 20s can really hurt. In fact, to the extent that if you're a hardcore Iron Man, you may wish to consider entering via the east gate so that you don't have to walk past them. But anyway, we've arrived. There are some muggers around, so watch out for those if you're a low level. But once you go in, you can close the door and you're safe. And we are going to buy the... Oh, that was the wrong... Oh, I haven't done the quest, so it's all good. Um, going to trade and buy the runes we need. Um, I'm not going to overbuy because we're a bit low on cash. So the six air runes... Uh, I've got to make sure I buy the ones, right ones. Six air, six water, six earth. Water, earth. So that's the runes we need. We have 75 GP left. Uh, and now we're going to be walking to Edgeville. I will just show you the route. Um, get to the center of rock. If you have 21 agility, you can actually go through the Grand Exchange and take this agility shortcut, which will make the route slightly shorter. Um, but if but I'm just going to assume that you don't have it, we'll be crossing this bridge almost to Barbarian Village and then going north. But I will show you now. And we have arrived in Edgeville. Now, the path I am about to take uh, is going to be pulling this lever here, and it is going to take you to deep wilderness, really deep wilderness, uh, level 50 plus. Um, now, we are only going to be there for about half a second, so I would, even though it's going through deep wilderness, and for, for new players that means 
um, other players will be able to attack you. I do think it's very safe. We're going to pull the lever. And then when we arrive, we're going to pull it again. And that will take us to our doing. Uh, and it's even if there's someone there, it's really unlikely they'd have time to attack you. 99% of the time, there's going to be no one there anyway. If you're a hardcore Iron Man, you should really think twice before doing this. I want to say, like, it's it's like a one in a million chance that this goes wrong for you. But, and if you're happy to take those odds, that's fine. I'm just giving you the warning now so that you are aware of the risk. Um, you might also want to think about banking your items um, just in case, but I'm gonna I'm gonna just go for it. That's how confident I am. Watch me just eat my words now. For reference, the bank is this building just to the north. So uh, if you want to bank your items, that's fine. But I'm just gonna go for it. We pull the lever. It gives you a warning. Um, don't show the message again. And we pull the lever again. Easy as that. There wasn't even anyone here. And now we are in Ardoin. So to show you, here we are on the west side of East Ardoin, um, on the other side of the map, which is where we want to be, because we are getting close to the quest start location. So we are going to be going east to the general store, because the general store sells rope and then a bit further east to the market where we are going to steal our food. So first, the general store. If you have some spare cash, you've been playing your Iron Man a little longer, you might want to buy a few ropes just because rope is used in an awful lot of quests. And so it's, it's useful to have some in the bank so you don't have to be constantly buying it. But I'll just buy the one. Um, and so that's now all the quest items done that are necessary. Now we're just going to pick up some food. So with our five thieving, we can now steal from the baker stools. And this will be a little painstaking, but it's, uh, it's definitely the best food on an early Iron Man because you will steal cake from the baker stool and cake heals 12 health, 12 health per inventory slot. So when the guards aren't too nearby, you're just going to want to steal cake as soon as it respawns. If you steal while a guard can see you, fortunately that one couldn't get to us so we walked off, but uh, I will keep stealing until a guard catches me and show you what to do. Um, it's the cake that you really want. Um, it's eaten in three bites. Okay, so this guard spotted me, and he will go into combat with me. All I have to do is run a few squares to the east, and that's out of his combat range, and he'll just walk away. And then we can run back and continue stealing. And so once you have a full inventory of food, you see me, I'll just show you again. So they can hit quite high, you just run to the side and you can use your newfound food to heal up. But now I have a full inventory. The quickest place to bank is if you just run out the northwest exit of the market and follow this path west a little way. You will reach a bank where you can bank all your food, and you might as well bank all of your items, and just carry on um, thieving until you have a good um, stock of cakes in your bank. Okay, so I just rather uneventfully stole a load of cake, um, got a fair few thieving levels, up to level 12 now, which is nice, and we are ready to walk to the quest start location. So you will be needing uh, the rope, and you might as well um, grab a few cake, just so you have them. You don't actually need the runes for the first half of the quest, so you can leave those in the bank. Uh, I will be taking them with me because, um, spoilers, we are literally back in time and I haven't shot the introduction to this video yet. So, 
we are currently in the north bank of Ardoin, and we are simply going to be walking north with a slight westerly slant um, up here to Backstore and Falls, where the quest starts. If you have a games necklace, uh, now would be a good time to use it, as the Barbarian Outpost teleport option will teleport you here, and then it's a, a short walk south. And you should bring that necklace with you. But anyway, we will be walking, so let us begin. <laughs> And here we are at the quest start location. Okay, so let us begin the quest. Now you don't need the runes on you for the first half of the quest, but since I already have them, I'm just going to keep them out in my inventory, but all you need right now is rope and food and optionally your Iron Man armor. So to start the quest we're going to talk to Almira. And she says she has a problem, and you pick, how can I help? Uh, she will ask you to look for her son. Now exit out the back side of her house, uh, which is to the west. Open the gate. You might see some people doing some barbarian fishing. And board this log raft. After a brief pause, you will end up uh, on this small island, and if you don't click anything, you will automatically enter dialogue with Uden here, or you can click to talk to him. And so, uh, he'll say, he'll be quite sarcastic and rude, uh, he'll mention some treasure, and you offer to help, but he says he's fine, because he doesn't want you taking his treasure. So now that that's done, uh, we need to leave the waterfall, and you can do that by simply attempting to swim. Uh, and that will fail, and it will deposit you at the bottom of the falls without taking any damage. So if I just show you on the map where we are, we were at the house here, and then we've gone from here, washed down the river to here. And we are going to be entering this building just north of us, which is actually a tourist information centre. And so enter the building and climb up the stairs and search uh, the second bookshelf on the eastern wall and you will find a book on Backstorian. Uh, I believe it's always in the same place. Uh, read the book. You do have to open it. Uh, flick through it. I'm not sure you need to flick through it, but it's pretty short. Uh, but do make sure you open it, otherwise you won't be able to continue with the quest. Uh, climb down and talk to Hadley. Uh, you will have a few dialogue options and you do need to go through every single one. So we will start with, can you tell me what happened to the Elf King? The order doesn't matter, but you do have to go through all of them. Uh, followed by, is there anything else worth visiting around here? And he will give you some backstory about the waterfall. And then finally, is there treasure under the waterfall? And that is everything. So you can say goodbye if you want to be polite. So now we need to go and get a pebble from Trinome Village, which is all the way to the south, this area here. Now there are a few ways to get here. Uh, if you have completed the Ardoin Easy Diaries, then the cloak will teleport you to the monastery and you can walk from there to the maze entrance. If you have 15 fishing, you can use the Fishing Trawler minigame teleport, which will teleport you to Port Cazard here, and then walk uh, west again to the start of uh, Trino Village Maze. Um, but assuming you don't have either of these options and you are a brand new account, you can minigame teleport to Castle Wars and from there uh, path your way north to the start of the maze, which is the route I am going to take. So if you are unaware of minigame teleports, they are found under what might be for you the quest tab. 
and then uh, in these options here it's the red one select mini game um, we are choosing castle wars and hit teleport and it will perform a teleport similar to the home teleport uh, it is on a separate cooldown to the home teleport the home teleport is a half hour cooldown the mini game teleport is a separate 20 minute cooldown so you won't be able to use this again for 20 minutes uh, and there is a bank here if you wish to um, get food or armor out. So now we are going to run towards Trinome Village across these two bridges and then following the river around uh, I will leave the world map up. So now we have arrived at the beginning of the maze that will take you into Trinome Village. If you have started or completed the Trinome Village quest, um, you can talk to Elkoy and he'll actually have a follow option and he'll take you straight into the center. However, um, I have not started it, so I will show you how to walk through. <laughs> It is this ladder here that we are looking for. So there are two parts to when we get down into uh, this dungeon. Step one is obtain a key to a cell, and then step two is open the cell to speak to the gnome. So I'm going to turn on my run. I will climb down and run to the east. There are hobgoblins, which max hit six, so don't worry about them too much. And search this discolored crate here to obtain the key. If you don't find the key, make sure you've read the book on Backstory. And so now we are running back to the west, and you will see a gate here. It's called a door for some reason. Use the key on it, and the key fits and opens and takes you through to safety. And I will eat another piece of cake. Here there is a gnome called Glory. Gol Golry? Golry. Talk to Golry. And there is some quest dialogue. Afterwards, don't click anything, and you will look around on the floor and find an old pebble, which you will take. That's the pebble that we're looking for. I would strongly recommend getting multiple pebbles, preferably two, um, in case you have a horrible accident and die. Uh, you don't have to return all the way here to get another one. And so we will use the drop trick, which is simply you drop the pebble uh, and talk through the dialogue again. Find the second pebble. So now we have two. Unfortunately, without a games necklace and with our mini game teleport on cooldown, there is no really quick way back to the backstory and falls area which is where we are headed to. If you do have a games necklace uh, teleport to Barbarian Outpost where there is a bank chest and you can bank there. Um, I am going to take the very long run back and I am going to be uh, going out of the maze uh, east to the monastery and then north into our doing and banking at the north bank ready for the next step of the quest. Okay, so I have arrived in North Ardoin Bank and banked and prepared for the next section of the quest, which is absolutely the tricky part. You cannot have with you any armor, weapons, or runes, so if you have the air, water, and earth runes, do bank them now and grab an inventory similar to mine. So you need the pebble. Uh, I don't believe you need the book, but I'm bringing it anyway. And then the best food you have. I have cake for the healing, and then I have some emergency bread because bread heals five in one eat, whereas the cake can only heal four. Um, so, uh, time to find out 
if I'm as good at this as I think I am. So we are heading just a little bit north to uh, this uh, grey area here, which is Glanriel's tomb. <laughs> So, on entering the tomb, there are two things you need to do. There is a coffin to the south that you need to search to obtain an urn, and there is a chest to the west, which contains a necklace. I would recommend getting two of the necklaces, just again, so you have a spare, and we'll be using the drop trick to do that. Now, this is the area with the high-level moss giants that can hit 14s on my 10 health. However, the area is single combat, and that is what we will be using to uh, hopefully avoid being hit. So we're using the pebble on the tombstone. If you have any contraband, armor, or weapons, then you will not be able to enter. Here we are. I'm quickly going to hide to one side. So the way this is going to work is... Uh, there are lower level skeletons and zombies which uh, have a max hit of probably three or four uh, and this is the moss giant that you really never want to be hit by. So if we are in combat with a zombie or skeleton the moss giant cannot attack us and that is the trick we are going to use. So we will start by taking the south route uh, and I'll quickly just run past the moss giant, he was a bit out of the way, so no problem there. Ah, now this is the tricky bit. We want to absolutely make sure that a zombie or skeleton hits us before we're anywhere near that moss giant. So I am going to wait until one of them naturally approaches. Hopefully that won't take too long. Perfect, here's the skeleton. So, perfect, he's in combat, so I'm actually going to, okay, turn off auto retaliate and just walk. That way he will remain in, contact, in combat with me. And now I can search the tomb, and I have the urn, I'm going to eat to heal up, and then I'm going to walk away, all the time remaining in combat with this skeleton. Until it got blocked. <laughs> but we're all good. I'm past it. So that is the urn obtained. Uh, I will eat again to make sure I'm at full health. And now we're going to do the same to get past this moss giant. And there is another one next to this chest. But um, as long as you stay in combat, you should be fine. So I'm going to wait for something to walk a bit closer. Oh. Okay, the moss giant's out of the way, I'm making a break for it. Uh, okay, and the zombie is on me, which is great. I'm gonna eat up, make sure it's on me, cool. Make sure it's on me still, awesome. We're gonna open the chest, it's still attacking me, heal up. Uh, search the chest, we obtain the necklace. Now we're gonna use the drop trick again, drop the necklace, search again to obtain a second one, and pick up the previous one. And now once we're at full health again, we're going to run over here. Again, we still have to get past this other one, so keep healing up. Keep making sure you're in contact with this zombie here. And after it's attacked you, we're making a break for it. Perfect. And there you have it. And just climb up the ladder. Uh, that was definitely the most difficult part, because for the final bit we can wear armor. Um, and so now we have what we need. We're just going to run back the way we came down to the northern Ardoin bank to withdraw the quest items we need. Okay, so I have withdrawn what I need for the final part of the quest, the key items being the urn, the amulet, the rope, the air, water and earth rune, six of each. Uh, you don't need the book and the pebble, but since I've brought them this far, I'm just going to take them with me anyway. You'll notice I am wearing full iron armor, or at least put out the shield full iron armor, um, just in place of the Iron Man armor, which um, hopefully you're using. But if you don't have it, it's not the end of the world. I'm just going to bring the extra bit of protection. And again, um, plenty of food. So we are going to be 
returning to the quest start location, like Storian Falls at Almira's house, and uh, I will see you there. And so here we are back at Almira's house, and we are just going to completely ignore her and walk through her house in an incredibly rude way and out the back, the way we went at the very beginning of the quest. We are going to board the log raft. We are going to completely ignore the child, which we spoke to before, and carefully walk to the end of this island. Make sure you don't accidentally swim. We are going to use the rope on this rock. You may find that you have to tilt the camera down to see it, or if you're using OS Buddy, you can use hold control and use the scroll wheel to zoom out to see it more easily. We use the rope on the rock, and we safely make our way over and then we will use our rope on this near dead tree and we are now outside the entrance to the backstory and falls dungeon where the glarial's amulet you must wear it if you are not wearing it you will not be able to enter and you will take damage and fall back down the waterfall and have to walk all the way back up so make sure you're wearing it and then uh, you can enter. So now we're inside the dungeon, you'll see a few nasty things. There are some level 52 shadow spiders, but they do only have a max hit of 5, so they shouldn't trouble us too much. First of all, with our run on, we are going to take the rightmost door, the east door, and run past everything that wants to hurt us, which is pretty much everything, and search this double crate to the far north of the room, where we will find a key, literally called a key. We will try not to die. I should really, you know, concentrate a little bit more. Now this is the uh, next very tricky bit. You do have to pass these fire giants, level 86. They do have a max hit of 11, so if you're 10 HP, we are going to use the same trick as with the moss giants and enter combat with a weaker creature to pass them because this is a single combat zone. We have an option of the shadow spiders or the rats. Obviously the rats are preferable, but unfortunately it looks like there isn't one by the door. Which means we will have to use one of these spiders and uh, pray that we don't die. So we open the door. Stay nice and healthy. Uh, I'm actually going to turn the run off so that we remain in combat. And now once you're a significant way and you've been hit, oh, okay. And once you're on this square outside the door, you're safe because the fire giants are too big to reach you. And that is the quest pretty much complete. We simply use the key on the door to pass through and then pass through the next door, or use the key on it apparently, because it's locked. And here is the final room. So the process is, uh, there are six pillars, and so step one is use an air rune on each pillar, one air rune per pillar. Uh, I believe you can apply the runes in any order. But, uh, so it doesn't matter too much. And the last one. And now we will use a water room on each pillar. And finally use an earth room on each pillar. Once you have done that, walk up to the statues and remove your Glarial's amulet and use it uh, on the statue of Glarial. The ground will rise up for you, as they mentioned in the chat box, in a rather odd way. Do not take the chalice. 
walk up to the chalice and use Glarial's urn on it. And that is quest complete. Uh, and there is the massive amount of XP. If I just quickly close this, you will see all the way from level 1 to level 30 strength and attack. Fantastic. I will see you in the next video and thank you for watching. Hey guys, so this was my first actually major quest guide. My previous two were for obviously very simple quests and I'd really appreciate some feedback on how you found it. If there's anything that you'd like to see done differently, um, whether I should completely skip walking places or um, go through things a little bit faster or a little bit slower. It'd be great if you could let me know in the comments. And equally, if you thought there were things I did well and you want to see more of, um, let me know too. And also if there are any quests that you want me to do sooner rather than later. Uh, finally, if you did find this guide helpful, uh, if you can hit that like button, I'm sure it'll help other people find this guide and hopefully it can help more people. And so lastly, uh, here is the clip of me catching those implings on my Iron Man. So here's a sneak peek at my Iron Man while I hopefully go to get those implings that are still there. Uh, some jars. Net. And I will need a hunter potion because I'm only... Um... Oh, and I'm on Lunas. I was just doing some ZMI rune crafting, so I'm not on the right spell, but... Um, yeah, I hope those implings are still there. That would be pretty nice. Uh, so yeah, I only have uh, level 80 hunter, and you need 83 for dragon implings, so I do have a hunter potion um, to boost the level if I find it. Hopefully they're still around. Oh my gosh. Well, there's one. Essence? That doesn't bode well. Ninja. Oh, it's still there. Oh my god, we hit the mother load. Gimme, gimme. Gimme. Okay. Dragon. Oh my god, look at that. What a haul. I might as well open for them for you guys. Uh, so, from worst to best, best to worst, worst to best. Essence Impling. Eclectic. Ugh, trash. Ninja. Eh. And dragon. Mm, not great. I'll probably just splice this in at the end. Back to the quest.